What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and today we're going to be taking a look at none other than the performance benchmarks and settings that you can adjust to improve performance in Sniper Elite 4. Whoo, that was a close one. Alrighty fellas, so let's go ahead and get things started with the test bench, which is going to be an i7 6700K, and that's overclocked to 4.9 gigahertz. It has been delitted, and it's at 1.45 volts. Now, it's mated to an MSI Z170 a pro sli motherboard and it has 16 gigabytes of ddr4 and that's clocked at 2400 megahertz the game itself is going to be running on a solid state drive it's a 500 gigabyte scan disk of course it is closer in the budget range but it gets the job done and the power supply is going to be a thermal take uh let's see 850 watt gold rated power supply i can't remember exactly which model sorry i'm used to saying the course air ax 860i but that one in the test bench actually failed so I, I i don't know i'm waiting on the rma we'll see what happens with that of course the graphics cards are going to vary we're going to have about six or seven of those graphics cards that you guys can take a look at and next let's go ahead and talk about the benchmark run itself the benchmark run is actually going to be at the very first mission is going to be right after the point to where you can actually start saving yourself so you can kind of just start pressing start until you can see save game it's about 20 minutes into the game and you start at the top of the hill and then we're going to just walk down across the road it does have some nice reflections in the puddles on the road so that can help us out and there's plenty of sunlight to also take advantage of things like all of the shadowing so i felt like it was pretty good of course shooting the enemies has a lot to do with performance but to stay consistent it's really hard to do that and kind of get the biggest load on the game biggest load all right so basically you're going to walk across the road then you're going to take a left and then as you come down you'll see the ocean and you'll pan to your right and look up at the kind of farmhouse that you're going to be told to kill an officer at it's kind of the first like set point in this uh quasi semi open world setting that is sniper elite 4. finally let's get into settings essentially for all the benchmarks that you're going to see here we're going to be in 1080p at ultra settings and we're going to have both directx 12 and async compute enabled now the reason both async compute and directx 12 are enabled is not to give an advantage to amd as you guys will see here shortly but it's more because on both amd and nvidia directx 12 and async show performance gains so there's no reason that you should not be using directx 12 or async at this point unless you're having some weird compatibility issues but to delve deeper into the settings as always i have my settings performance here that we can go ahead and talk about we're going to have the percent by change or percent change by setting in this chart here and essentially what that means is that is the percent of fps you can gain by adjusting these settings i.e turning them off or turning them on depending on this setting now it's also going to be listed now unlike before in the past but I've kind of put them from greatest gain to least amount of gain in that order from top to bottom so you guys can tell pretty quickly which ones you need to be taking a look at here alrighty so to get things started the biggest thing you're going to be able to turn off and grab the best or most FPS that you're going to be able to do is going to be reflections now this is going to provide about a 12.4 percent gain in FPS however I would note that reflections does affect visual fidelity and it's one of the higher ones up on the list for visual fidelity in my opinion you're going to lose all of the reflections in in the puddles and kind of stuff like that like you'll see in the benchmark run when you're going across the road so that is kind of disappointing that that is one of the largest the next is going to be draw distance and that's going to give you an 11.4 percent change in fps and the problem here is that draw distance is kind of important in a sniper game so it's really hard to kind of turn this off and that's kind of where my disappointments are that the two biggest things you can do for frame rate to improve it are two of the ones that provide the most improvement visually 
for yourself as you're playing the game. Now bumping down we do get shadow detail which will give you a 7% change yet again this does affect visual fidelity quite a lot but it's one that you can kind of give up. But if you do turn it all the way off you're going to lose the shadows from the actual player while you're in the game and seeing that this is a third person game that kind of does bring a big bummer to the whole settings here. Now another thing to note is that if you do turn it all the way off it does still have the shadows from the trees and the environment which I found interesting. Moving on you can actually get a pretty good bump as well about a 6% or 6.6% change closer to that 7% with ambient occlusion. Now I don't feel like it's something necessary so I would probably start here if I'm trying to gain frame rate but keep like the texture detail or game world detail up with things like shadow detail, draw distance, and reflections. With about 5% change, you can go ahead and turn down your anisotropic filtering, which I feel is something you can also pretty much get rid of and not really hurt the world detail is what I'm going to call it here. Another 5% you can gain from texture detail and this is really going to depend on your personal preference. I didn't really actually notice a huge difference between texture detail all the way up and texture detail all the way off. Things do get a little bit more blurry but it's not terrible or awful to say. You're going to get another 5% with anti-aliasing and here's one. This is a free 5% guys. It, it's not especially at higher resolutions once you start getting to 1440p it's irrelevant in my opinion now I don't even like it at 1080p that might be a personal preference thing I would just probably start here and turn this all the way off and grab my extra 5% in frame rate next we have tessellation with a 4.4% gain or loss depending on if you're turning it all the way up or all the way off and then we have obscurance fields with another 4% that you can adjust as well and then finally we have async now Async's kind of an interesting one. Now keep in mind that I always take the RX 480 and the GTX 1060 and then I grab the averages. But there's a pretty big disparity here and you could actually get a little bit more on the AMD side with async especially on your minimum frame rate so it doesn't actually translate that well in the average frame rates which this these tests are based upon because that's kind of the easiest way to get you guys some pretty decent close to accurate numbers for adjusting your game settings on your end now I just want you to keep in mind that it will help out finally we have motion blur which everybody typically in the PC gaming community turns off now this is going to be helpful in situations where you're playing around that 30 FPS range but if you're 60 and above you're probably going to want to keep it off and it really doesn't matter if you turn it on or off it's up to you it's not going to affect your frame rate at all now that we've drudged through all of the settings and what you can change to improve the frame rate for you let's go ahead and talk about what graphics card or latest graphics card from the pascal or polaris line that you may want to be picking up here so here we have everything from the gtx 1050 all the way to the gtx 1060 and of course its competitor on the AMD side. Once we have some Vega cards come out we might start looking at adding in something like the GTX 1070 and 1080 against the latest cards in the 500 series from AMD but for now I figure let's go ahead and focus on where the competition lies which is right in this kind of 200 to 300 dollar price range that I think is most relevant at this point. So go ahead and pop into this and you're going to see that the GTX 1050 has a minimum FPS of 25 with an average of 38.5 and a max of 44.9 so about 45 on the max and the average is playable. Now unfortunately since the min drop below 30 fps i'm going to recommend turning settings down to get a reasonably playable experience on a pretty low end card you're talking about a card that's around that 100 dollars range which is pretty impressive but even more impressive you get really close to that 30 fps min and keep in mind this is an ultra with everything on with the rx 462 gigabyte now i would still turn some things down but the minimum fps is going to be 28.2 with an average of 33.1 and a max of 44. .2. Point four pretty cool stuff. Now if we're talking about bumping it up even further we're going to have the GTX 1050 Ti. This is the dual trim from Asus and the minimum is going to be 29.4 with an average of 41.7 and a max of 49.5. Here's where I feel like you could probably turn motion blur on and if you've been a console peasant in the past you're probably going to be right at home 
with a 1050 Ti. Moving on up, we have the Sapphire RX 470. This is the four gigabyte model, which had a minimum FPS of 46.9, with an average of 63.4, and a max of 74.7. Now, the average is 60 FPS, so this is looking pretty solid. The RX 470 has been one of my favorite as far as the 1080p market goes. And for the price of this card, which was coming in at about $164 US, it's pretty Pretty hard to beat this value here. Of course, while the EVGA GTX 1060 3GB did beat out on the average FPS with a 66.2, it still only matched the minimum FPS of the RX 470 and had a max of 76.3. Now, I don't know if it's really worth the extra 40 bucks between the RX 470 and the GTX 1060 3GB, and I'd probably just skip over the 3GB all the way and not even worry about it. But if you want to get even closer to that 60 FPS goodness you can take a look at the GTX 1060 super super clock that is the trim that we have here with a minimum FPS of 54.3 an average of 75.6 and a max of 90.9 finally we have the RX 488 gigabyte gaming X edition and it had a minimum FPS of 57.6 with an average of 76.4 and a max of 87 now obviously to get a 60 FPS gameplay smooth gameplay and never drop below 60 we're going to have to adjust some 1080p settings it's kind of a disappointment that we're not getting above that but we are staying kind of at that ultra high fidelity and it's a pretty late game we could also see some performance improvements from them as time goes on with patches i'm not even saying that this is not an optimized game though because as you see even on the low level we're getting pretty good frame rates and i'm happy with the performance of sniper elite 4 overall and and our gaps between the minimum and the max FPS are not atrocious. So we're seeing some pretty good optimization and I think that it'll only improve as time goes on. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Let me know what you guys think about the Sniper Elite 4 performance review. See if there's anything you guys would like me to add or subtract from the next performance review. And if you guys want to get a real good opinion in or show off one of your current builds, go ahead and head on over to Sniper of attack.com where we have our forums and it's a pretty small community so you will be seen and you will be heard and acknowledged so we'd love to see you over there thanks for watching and i'll see you next tuesday